Welcome back to another tutorial on probability. So this time around we are going to be treating Bernoulli distribution as well as binomial. Well they are, they are the same thing. They are the same thing. You solve them the same result that one one is specific, one is about just the value, the other is in range, range of values. We're going to understand as time goes. Now let's take for example you have two coins. Take for example two coins. You are tossing the two coins. You are tossing two coins, and um, you are trying to find the probability that if you are tossing two coins, what's the probability that you get one head, one head? So take for example the two coins. You toss it. What is the sample space? That either you get head, 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 tail, tail, head, or tail, tail. Isn't it? Yeah. On the probability of getting two heads, I'm yeah, sorry, probability of getting one head. Let's see what's the probability of getting one head when you toss two coins. That's um, this and this, it occurs twice, two out of the four sample space, and that's what one over two, isn't it? Yeah, straightforward, fine, no problem, we're good to go. Yeah, but what if you have five? Five coins. That's the probability of getting one head. Now the problem starts where the problem starts at this point where you have to bring out the sample space. How many do you want to write? That's five factorial. How many sample space do you want to draw? There isn't time for that. Even if there's time for that, uh, you don't want to waste your whole time writing out this. There should be a faster way, isn't it? Yeah. So that's where ben Bernoulli comes in. Now, um, the formula for the Bernoulli, Bernoulli um, distribution is N combination R. It comes in different forms, but the point is you know you knowing the, each of them, the variables, you knowing what they mean. N combination R, some people say N combination K, some people give different. Now, N combination R, P R, Q N minus R. Yeah, so now the question now is what is n, what is r, and the likes. I know we know that c is combination. n is the total number. The sound, let's take it as the sample space. No, no, not sample space. The uh, what how would I term this in terms of this coin now? You know, we say we have five coins here. So the sample the, the n here is five. The number of elements you are dealing with, the total number of elements you are dealing with, the sample space, the, the total number of elements I'm dealing with is five, five coins. And um R is the um the 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 sample number. Uh, how would I put this now? Okay. In this case, let's assume the question was out of five thousand five coins, what probability of head one head occurring? Now that one R A is one in this case. It's just the number of uh, the the what we are trying to get, the number of the element we are trying to find the probability. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. So in this case, the N is just the total number of samples you have. And the ones you are trying to randomly select, the number of the ones you are trying to randomly select gets the R. So you can just see N as the population. Let's take it as that because I can't really find a good name to give them. And let's take R as the sample. I believe we understand that. Now P is the probability of success. Probability of the success of the event and um, Q is the failure. Probability of the failure, failure of the event. So the P is the success of the event, Q is the failure of the event. So now I'm going to explain that part. Taking, let's take a, for example this same, this one that we have been dealing with since. Take for example, you have you have to you have to find a probability of getting one head if you toss five coins. 
probability of getting one head in tossing five coins. So let's take this and um, we've already said that the n is a number like the population, the number of elements you are dealing with five coins a and r is the number of events yes let's put it that way number of events the event is one head yes i think that's a good name number of events number of events that's one head the event here is one head so one is the number of events so we can we can begin filling them out now p is the success of that event now what's the event one head if i'm tossing one coin uh, what is the probability of getting one head when tossing one coin as a success you're going to do the use the unit just one so what's the probability of getting what's the probability of getting a head when tossing one coin that's what one out of two so p a is what one out of two raised to power of r r is one now q is a failure what's the probability of not getting head when tossing one coin i hope you understand that not getting one head you can see one minus the success will give us or you can just do it manually not getting one head means getting tail because it's either head or tail so getting the tail and getting tail is just one out of two probability is one out of two so one out of two then five minus one then 5 combination 1 is 5 times 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 times raised to the power of 4. So, I think whatever you get here is definitely the answer. 5 out of 32. So, imagine we are to write this. We are going to, I think we should we'll be writing out like 32 samples. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 20 is even more than 32 self this one must have been broken down so that is binomial binomial distribution how does binomial distribution come in now binomial distribution comes in where you have range let's take for example now you are tossing five coins and the question comes this way what one two three four five you're tossing five coins Mm, because you have is either you get head or tail, head or tail, or tail. Okay, now uh, the question comes what's the ability of getting at least now that word at least less than more than at most. All those words they are telling you range of values. If you have at least, at least two means the least the least at all should be two that means two three four five and likes greater than at least two means greater than one isn't it or greater or equals to two let's put it that way and less than one that one is straightforward less than sorry less than less than two at less than two means less than two more than two greater than two and at most like at most the even if it wants to be much at most two means what it is two or less i hope you understand that so these ones are giving range of values not just one value so that's binomial distribution and how does it work it's still the same thing still the same as this one it's just that you're going to do for each of the values so if you have a question like what's the probability of getting at least two at least two heads when you are tossing five coins probability of getting at least two heads in tossing five coins now that's when you're talking about now so that means you are going to do for two for three for four and for five at least so now i know you are kind of already thinking eh, if that's a stress now i'm going to do five combination two 1 over 2 raised to the power of 2 1 over 2 raised to the power of 5 minus 2 plus I'm going to do for that of 3 years you are going to do it you are going to do it but 
but I'm glad to tell you that um, some of these have faster means. Yeah, they have faster means. Like for example, this question now has a better better way of getting the answer. Now, since the samples, the number of elements is five, five coins, isn't it? You're tossing five coins, and you are told to find the probability of getting at least at least two. That's two, three, four, five. You know that you still have. It starts from zero. No, no head, uh, isn't it? If you are if you are getting number of head, no head, one head, two, three, four, five. If you find the probability of all this for zero, for one, to four, and you sum everything, you get one. You know, probability you sum all the probabilities. Normally, probability is one, isn't it? One and zero. Then the every every other thing falls in between one and zero, isn't it? Good. So that means if I sum everything here, it should give me one. And if everything if I sum everything and it gives me one, why would I not stress myself doing this if I can just easily find the probability of these two, then subtract it from one to give the remaining? That's all straightforward. I believe you understand that. Instead of me doing the probability of two, three, four, five, then summing everything and getting the answer according to this question, at least two heads. And I know that if I do everything here, yeah, it's going to give me one. I already have the total. So why don't I just do for these two? And what I get, I subtract it. Subtract it from one, rather. Once I subtract it from one, it gives me what is left. I hope you understand that logic. So let's just do that. Five combination, zero. One over two, that's the success of the event. One over two, this power of zero. And then the failure of the event, so the power of five minus zero now, plus five combination one, one over two raised to the power of one, plus one over two raised to the power of five minus one. So this is five combination one is five combination zero is one, the half raised to the power of zero is one, half raised to the power of four, five, sorry, because this is five times one over two times 1 over 2 is the power of 4. So this is 1 all over 32 plus 5 all over 32. So once I have this, 32, that's 6 all over 32. And then, since I know everything will sum up to 1, I can just say 1 out of 1 minus 6 over 32. So that's 32, 32 minus 6. And that's what 26 yeah 26 all over 32 and you have gotten the answer so you can take your time do for every other do for two three four five and you see you get the same thing you see you definitely get 32 so how would you see you can get questions like this in exams yeah you get questions very well like this and then um, another way the question might come sometimes the question might not come directly in uh, this coin form it might be any other thing but the point is you understanding when to use the binomial binomial or binomial whichever one the point is understanding when to use it if you have samples from between 0 to you can use it for samples from between 0 to 30 elements between 0 to 30 the other one was saying 5 coins isn't it 10 coins imagine you are tossing 10 coins and the likes yeah, so zero zero to thirty elements, and in that element, you'll be given the success. You'll be given, you'll be given all you. There's a way you can get it. Some, some will be given. Some you won't be given. You have to find it yourself, based on the question. So you'll be given the probability of, of success of the event, and if, you know if you have the success, you can easily get the failure of the event. Now you now be told to find find the uh, number of ways which you can select a subunit out of the total. So, if, for example, if it is total now, total is ten now, and uh, yeah, the total is ten. Now we told to find the probability of picking a number that is less than this, something less. It will be the first probability of uh, if to be. Uh, uh, Based on the question, whatever the question talks of, if you are told to find the probability of selecting something less than this, you understand. So, 
it might be nine, it might be eight, it might be maybe a range of numbers, maybe one to two. So in that we are solving binomial or binomial this way. A very good example is Okay, so this is the question. You know, based on the question, we have um, based on the question, we have uh, the it says that COVID vaccine in development was tested on different people, and the recovery rate is seventy percent. Now, this seventy percent is uh, like it is it's like a teaser. It's teasing you. It's no percent. It's not that you have to throw it away or something. It is telling you the probability of success of that event. They are trying to test COVID vaccine, and the point is. We want them to recover from the vaccine using the vaccine, isn't it? So this is the success of the aid, and also success does not necessarily mean positive because there are some questions that might confuse you. It doesn't necessarily mean positive. So since the success of the event is seventy percent, then we can then say p in this case is seventy all over hundred, and since p is seventy over hundred, then q would then be the failure of the event that is what 30 all over 100 okay so we are these two these two they are set to the already fine now what is n from the question the n is simply the number remember the number of the elements that are dealing with that six and what is r R is the event. The event is what three shows that the three three recovers using the vaccine. That's three. So with this, you can just say n combination R P R Q N minus R. Then you solve it. I'm going to leave that to you to solve. The point is you understanding when to use binomial or Bernoulli. Binomial or Bernoulli works the same way. As long as, as, long as the, question, the question now says, you know, what's probability that at least or at most or what's probability that uh, four to five people shows positive you get? Those, that's when you're using range of values. That's, by, it's still the same thing. It's just that if it is a range of values, binomial, if it is just one, it's Bernoulli. Okay? And that's that. Now I mentioned something about sometimes it might not be positive, sometimes it might be negative, it might not be positive or that like let's use this here. We can still use this question. What is if the question goes this way? Six people are randomly selected. Six people are randomly selected. What is the probability that two do not and that two out of that six do not recover or do not show any recovery signs? Do not show recovery signs or something. You understand the question? So now two of them do not show the recovery. So what's the probability now? You see this the, these two are different. This one is three shows. This one is do not show. So in this case, P now is the success of that event. The was the event do not show, doesn't show recovery sign. I hope you understand. The event is doesn't show recovery sign. So that was the success of not showing recovery signs. That's thirty percent. I hope you understand. Because it depends on the question. So this one is doesn't show recovery sign. The success of not showing recovery sign is thirty over hundred. But if the question is what's the process, what's the probability of uh, what probability that two shows recovery sign or two recovers from the vaccine or something, then that means the event is two recovering. That's the event. So the event means two recovery. And we told the astray that this is the recovery rate, seventy percent. So that's P will be seventy percent. But the event here is what two is not recovering is the event. So. The success of that event, the success of not recovering, how would it be? 30 over 100. Now, what's the failure of not recovering? Failure of not recovering means recovering, and that's what? 70%. I 
how we understand so then the five this one still stays the other one still stays and it goes that way so that's binomial distribution and Bernoulli distribution that's how it works so it's just like this this these are like the um uh they are like the pointer number one the elements won't be more than 30 that's number one like this is six it won't be more than 30. number two you'll be you you you'll be given probability in the question someone else might be given the probability in the question and um from that probability you are going to get the old or opposite the failure of the event and all and lastly the last one is out of the elements you'll be told to find probability of a selected few a sample so with that you should know you are using the Bernoulli or binomial distribution whichever the case may be so we've come to the end of um, this tutorial the next one will be on Poisson distribution thank you